2.4 GHz is a powerful option for wireless audio transmission. It's cost-effective and can get high-quality results, but it's not the professional standard. Today, we explain UHF wireless microphones and why you should be using them on your shoots. This topic is gonna to be dense, so before we dive into it, what's the easy explanation of UHF? In its simplest terms, UHF stands for ultra high frequency and is used to refer to wireless microphones that operate in the TV band. It's a robust wireless audio signal that is less prone to interference, especially when compared to 2.4 gigahertz. For example, 2.4 gigahertz wireless audio transmitters have to compete with every other device that uses 2.4 gigahertz. That's wireless routers, baby monitors, security cameras, and even that old microwave you refuse to throw away. I see you. Throw that thing away already. Crowded frequency bands result in dropouts, RF noise, and just generally unreliable audio. Didi's Theos wireless system avoids all that junk by using the UHF band to transmit a cleaner, more reliable signal that is best for professional use. So that's the simple explanation, but what actually makes UHF signals more robust? Our guest Gabe is here to explain. Hi, I'm Gabe Blinkowitz, and I don't need to say my last name, it's a mouthful. Hi, I'm Gabe, I'm a production sound mixer in Los Angeles. Some of my credits include commercials for Nike, Fitbit, and uh, Twisted Tea. Fun narrative project I did recently that I really love was Last Stop in Yuma County. Every wireless transmitter sends out radio waves that carry audio through the air. The characteristics of these waves affect everything from their ability to travel long distances to how well they pass through objects. UHF waveforms look like this, while 2.4 gigahertz waveforms look like this. Notice how the 2.4 gigahertz signal has a higher frequency than the UHF one? This means by the laws of physics, it also has a shorter wavelength. Wireless signals with shorter wavelengths are more easily reflected or refracted and thus cannot penetrate dense objects like concrete, wood, or metal. Ever been on set? That's literally every building material you've ever seen around you. UHF waveforms have a lower frequency and longer wavelength, allowing the signal to travel further and punch through objects more easily. Also, the frequencies in the UHF band are less crowded by other devices, and those that are there are easy to identify and avoid. Hopefully you can see how this would benefit you during a production. Maybe you've already even experienced these things on set. While on a professional set, your ability to capture clean audio from a distance without the worry of the signal being interfered with or cut off by the environment itself is critical. Many film sets present you with a situation where you need to set up in another room next door to the actual shooting environment. You never know what building materials are going to be between you and the actors on set, so you need to be prepared. UHF is robust and reliable, while 2.4 may not cut it. This robustness does come with greater legal responsibilities though. I'm gonna hand it back to Sarah to explain. There are a limited number of frequencies available in the world for everyone to use. Because of this, countries have designated specific frequency blocks for wireless microphones. Every country has its own laws for UHF devices. Some frequencies are available for everyone to use, while others may require a license or permit from that country. The legal frequencies your device operates on are called its frequency band. In addition, each country has regulations on RF power. That is the strength of your emitter, usually expressed in milliwatts. The RF power generally dictates the range and penetrative ability of your transmission. Traditionally, when you wanted to use UHF, you would need to understand the RF parameters of the country, state, and even city you were planning to shoot in. Once you know the RF parameters, you have to purchase a wireless microphone that operated in that frequency block that hopefully was not too crowded by the local TV station. The shitty thing about this is that if you needed to travel to another country where your current wireless wasn't legal, you would need to make a separate purchase all over again. Not easy on the wallet. DD Theos ditches all of that and gives you global usability. When you land in a new location and boot up the Citus Audio app, it automatically reconfigures your device to comply with local rules and regulation, keeping you out of prison in Croatia. This frees you up to just use one device, keeping your costs down and allowing you to focus on your actual job, being a sound mixer. UHF requires more planning and the price to get into it is markedly higher. So brass tacks, what does UHF allow you to do? And is it something your kit needs? You know, having UHF in your toolkit is a necessity. It gives you flexibility, it gives you options, and above all else, it gives you control. 
which is extremely important in this crowded RF environment. It's tough out there, and you need all the tools you can to succeed in this world. Hopefully now you know just a little bit more about UHF. If you have any questions, drop us a comment below and we'll help you out. Until next time, subscribe and happy shooting.